It started from an early age. Colby, would you like some fish? Well, don't you like fish? I hated fish. But I said, it's OK, sometimes. Fish is good for you. It's full of minerals. It makes you strong. Don't you want to be strong? Of course I wanted to be strong. Everyone wants to be strong. But I told my dad, maybe. <laughs> this is where things got interesting. Maybe? What, what do you mean, maybe? George, it's fine. Fish is good for you. It's full of minerals. It makes you strong. Don't you want to be strong? George, I don't mind. He doesn't have to eat the fish if he doesn't want to. I think he should eat it. Well, he obviously doesn't like it. Which I never said. I almost couldn't believe how things were going my way. <laughs> Maybe he likes it. Colby, would you like some fish so you can grow up big and strong? This was amazing. How could I actually control the outcome here? I decided to drop the hammer and nail the coffin shut. You don't think I'm strong? <laughs> George, that's enough! Why? You don't have to bully the boy. Bully the boy? He's strong. He's certainly strong for his age. You'll grow up to be as strong as you need to be, all right? You don't need any fish. Gladys! George. He's just a boy. Think of his feelings. You don't need any fish. Colby, I won't make it again. Your father is sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being stunned. I mean, what just happened? Was it a fluke? With a minimal amount of effort, I got my desired outcome. No fish for the rest of my life. I had to try this again. The trouble was, uh, I wasn't the most popular kid. I can't hear you! I can't hear you! Are you kidding me? Shadow Strike's powers are way awesomer than Doc Stars. Nah, no way! Hey, you guys. What's going on? Oh. oh. Hey, hey, Miller! Miller. <laughs> OK, male nerd! What's your favorite superpower? Huh? Like, if you could make a superhero and give him any power that you wanted, what would it be? Yeah, what would you name it? To be fair, I was put on the spot. I tried to think fast. Um, stretchy? What? Stretchy? <laughs> yeah, you know, like a rubber band? Like a guy who could reach across the room and grab a can of soda? That! Lame! Totally been done, Miller! Like a bajillion times! What would you name him? This was a lot of pressure. I couldn't think straight. The first thing that came to my head was uh, stretch. Mark! Ooh. <laughs> Bad move. Stretch Mark? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I mean, uh, stretch show? Super stretch! Stretch Mark. Wait, your goalie hears about this! Yeah! He's gonna die! They're all gonna die! <laughs> nice one, Miller. See you later. Loser! <laughs> that pretty much summed up my life on the playground up till that point. But the fish incident at the dinner table kept running through my head. Maybe I didn't need to try so hard. Maybe all I needed to be was... Hey, Tammy, isn't that the stretch mark head? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You should go and ask him. Ask him what? Go and ask him if he's the stretch mark head. But I already know it's him. <laughs> yeah, but go do it anyway. See what he does. What? You don't think I will? I? How dare you? <laughs> I had to stay calm. Well, is it? And vague. If it matters. Uh, well, it does. Then sure. Sure what? I've been called lots of things. Yeah. <laughs> but you're the stretch mark kid, aren't you? 
Is that important? Yes. Then sure. You already said that? Man, <laughs> these girls were rough. <laughs> Does it matter? You already said that too. Dang it. I was getting rattled, but I couldn't show it. Well, I didn't technically say that. Yes, you did. Not exactly. Then what did you say exactly? <laughs> ah, a trap. I needed humor, but the only thing I could think of was something my grandpa had said about a thousand times. Call me anything you want, but don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I had to keep it light. Maybe a little laugh. <laughs> if you can't think of anything cooler? <laughs> oh, I can. This wasn't going good. My budding social experiment was taking a major nosedive. Until... Are you new here? Tammy Thompson began to crack. Sorta. Of. Where are you from? Lots of places. <laughs> What's your real name? <laughs> It's not Mark. Uh, is it Stretch Mark? <laughs> Josie! Uh, I kind of like the name Mark. What you do? Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe I guess. Then Mark it is. Should I really call you Mark? If you want. My name's Tammy. <laughs> was heroin. But another awesome outcome. All from being highly unspecific. It was like too good. Half the time, if you can get to one person, then the rest will fall like dominoes. From that day on, I became Mark Miller. It didn't break my heart too much to lose my actual first name. After all, I was still Colby to my parents. But I quickly learned that Mark Miller is a much cooler name. It just sounded bolder, stronger, more masculine. Why weren't more people doing this? I really started to hone my skill. The trick is this. You want to be vague, but still easy to talk to. Nobody wants to be that awkward person that everyone else has to work hard to hold a conversation with. As I got older and better, the pressure was off for me to know the details about anything. All I needed was a few key sound bites and a clear reading of the people I was talking to. <laughs> you see the game last night? Oh, oh no. snap! That was the bomb! <laughs> Dude, that Hail Mary though! What's a Hail Mary? Could you believe that? It was like, from out of nowhere. <laughs> oh no! Yeah! So crazy! How many times do you think the ball is deep for shakers finally? Cut it! Dude, like, six, I think. At least, a miracle! <laughs> yeah! Totally! Boom! Go <laughs> on! Right. Last night, I created a seventh algorithm for solving Peabody's Mystery Z coordinates! <laughs> Nobody understands these guys. And if they do, they're probably faking it. I decided I could get them to fake it too. I worked out five algorithms, but two of them don't always hit. I think my first two are original, though. <laughs> I had no idea what they were talking about. But big words go a long way with this crowd. I decided to fake my way in. I was introduced to Peabody's mystery postulations through the back door. <laughs> like literally seconds ago. <laughs> so, I'm no expert, but it reminds me of Hobart's plausibility conundrum. I've always been fascinated by anomalistic circumlocution. <laughs> awesome! Yeah, so cool. <laughs> <laughs> they were lying! 
it. I made that up. That's when I knew I could get people. Even the 4.0 crowd to fake their understanding. But what about emotional touch points? This was even more fun. Kobe, I, I finally went to see it when the heart comes knocking last night. <laughs> I never heard of it. Oh, didn't you love it? Oh, of course I did. Did you? Here's a tip. Answering questions with questions can get you a long way. Who wouldn't? Oh, I would get in a robot with Kenneth Crandall any day of the week. <laughs> Absolutely anywhere. That scene was just so sweet. Jackpot. Rowboat. Wow. Am I right? Not right? Yeah. Robots are just so romantic. Oh, absolutely. Oh, Mark, that is so true. Those movie writers really know what they're doing. As soon as they introduce the rowboat, I never saw the movie, let alone a rowboat. <laughs> I thought, oh, that's just oh, the perfect place to propose. Oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Same. Ah, but the ending? Yes. When he dies and leaves her with the fortune that nobody knew that he had? Yeah, I did not see that coming. <laughs> I really didn't. Or the puppies! Oh, oh. The puppies! Or that! Puppies are just so cute. Oh. <laughs> I think I read somewhere that Albert Einstein and Thomas Edison we're both lousy in school. Maybe being a genius isn't so hard after all. Maybe all it takes is acting like one. Pretty soon, I had all the teachers wrapped around my little finger. Mom, I'd like to talk to you about this test. Excellent. Um, yes. I was hoping that we could. Talk about the test? Yeah. Oh, OK, I wasn't exactly You got it, right? Got what? The test? My insights. What insights? I'm sure by now you're able to gain insight into the context of my answer. <laughs> what? My inference of unexpressed meaning. <laughs> Mark, you failed this exam. <laughs> what, what are you smiling for? See, the 17 through 33 here, they're all wrong. I would think that too. At first. At first? At face value. <laughs> no, Mark, these answers are just plain wrong. You haven't solved the puzzle. Puzzle? What puzzle? What are the answers between the questions? Look closely. If you follow the breadcrumbs, I think you'll see. Mark, this isn't a game, it's a test. Profundity spark is fanned to a flame when the mundane is made into a game. <laughs> I made that up too! Sometimes my vague wisdom surprised even me. Pretty soon, Principal Lamp had a talk with my parents. that uh, Mark um, Khabib <laughs> may be underachieving. His test scores don't seem to be an indicator of his true intellectual ability, if I'm honest. He even talks over my head half the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we like to pull him in uh, advanced placament cohort for gifted and talented students. If he succeeds in this elite group, uh, it is likely that uh, <clears throat> Khabib 
You should have a, an early graduation. <laughs> and that's how I graduated from high school. Early. <laughs> Mark, I must say, you come to us highly recommended. As you know, we here at BizCorp pride ourselves on recruiting and hiring only the best candidates. Soon I learned that I could employ my uh, vague arts in kissing up when I needed to. Of course, ma'am. I realize that people like you have set the bar extremely high. BizCorp has been in fine hands for a long time. And I know how important it is to find the right people to carry on this company's important legacy of compassion and human service. <laughs> that may have been a bit much, but I rolled the dice. I had no idea if Biz Corp had dedication to any of those things. But thinly cloaked compliments had always worked well for me. And besides, what head honcho wouldn't love accolades of Compassion and human service. <laughs> That's excellent, Mark. I'm glad you see it that way. I'll be honest. The future of this company is very important to me. I'd be lying if I said that I hadn't lost some sleep about it. Ooh, some valuable info. I can use that. Time for some benign reassurance. <laughs> you know, Mrs. Gunderson, it's understandable that you might feel a sense of trepidation in these uncertain times. But I'm sure your gut instincts have always served you well. Things can sometimes get stuck for a long time, but you've had the perseverance to get them moving forward again. And because of that, I'm sure you can feel those old fears melting away. But obviously, you've been a strong woman of action, and you can bank on a bright outlook, because you have the courage to follow your heart. <laughs> Most of that was a paraphrase of a newspaper horoscope I had read just an hour before. Oh, and people love the follow your heart ploy. I threw that in for good measure. Now, time to wrap it up with a bow. Mrs. Gunnison, I've always admired businesses like BizCorp. I never knew anything about it. Especially BizCorp's ability to surround itself with the best and the brightest. Whether there's a position for me here or not, that admiration will never change. <laughs> Mark Miller, you are an impressive candidate indeed. I think you're just the kind of can-do executive we're looking for here at BizCorp. Welcome aboard, Mark. We're very excited to have you join us. Work was great. I met a lot of people. Mark! What'd you do this weekend? <laughs> oh, you know, went to the moon and back. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> right on, man. <laughs> hey, Mark, a bunch of us are getting together for drinks at Callahan's tonight after work. You want to come? You bet. And if I don't make it, you'll always wish I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. OK. Well, hopefully we'll see you down there. Totally. People would ask for my opinion. Hey, Mom. Yo. Do you think these red rings would look better in oh, a straight pattern like this one? Or is curved pattern better like this one? Uh, which pattern did you start out with? Oh, well, I started with the straight one. What made you want to switch? I don't know, the straight one just seemed like it needed a little something, and the curve seemed to add some, uh, you know, like dynamism. Cool. Well, I think you have your answer. <laughs> oh, you're right. I do. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Happy to help. No, you don't understand. This actually helps a lot. <laughs> Anytime, bud. <laughs> Last I checked. <laughs> well, what is it with guys and commitment? Uh-oh. This sounds like a question with some 
Backstory? Well, yeah. What's been going on? Well, I've been seeing this guy. Okay, does this guy have a name? Yeah, Raymond. Oh, Raymond. Raymond. <laughs> We've been going out for eight months. Nice. Where'd you meet? Well, we met at the park. Okay, a lot of this is just deductive reasoning. Just follow along. His name is Raymond, and they met in a park. Now, anyone can make a running guess that there's only a small percentage of guys Maggie's age who are named Raymond. He's probably older. If he's older, single, and they met in a park, then the chances are good that he has a dog. Do you like dogs? Yes, I love dogs. Why? Raymond had a dog with him when you met him, didn't he? Yeah, but how did you Is know? Is he older than you? Yeah. Say, eight years older. Oh, who is that? I lowballed it. <laughs> <laughs> He's 10 years older. How are you doing this? Now I could uh, play the game of averages and create a scenario that made me seem like a regular pop psychologist. Even vagueness can sound pretty specific if you do it right. <laughs> <laughs> look, Maggie, not all men are afraid of commitment, <laughs> but let's just look at Raymond's position. He's a whole decade older than you. Even as a younger man, he played the field. Ooh. He's had his fair share of relationships. Women who tried to control him or call him out on some insecurities that he's been dealing with. So. Like many single guys, he gets a dog. Is the dog a way to pick up women in the park? Oh. Ew. Or <laughs> is it a substitute for a lasting relationship with a human being? Oh, oh. I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, a dog won't reject him. It won't smother him. It won't tell him what he's doing wrong. And it won't break his trust. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Why would he need me? Look, everybody can see you are beautiful, oh. disciplined, oh. and self-controlled on the outside. <laughs> but is Raymond able to be the guy you turn to with worries and insecurities you harbor on the inside? After all, security is one of your major goals in life. What? How did you know? You're an independent thinker, Maggie. Not a pushover. You need to validate what others say as true. And that's why this is hard for you right now. Because it seems like you know this thing with Raymond is, well, what it seems to be.
Mark, do you take this woman to be your lawfully wedded bride? If so, answer by saying, I do. Well, somebody has to. And I'd be pretty dumb not to. <laughs> you may kiss the bride. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor to introduce to you the man you all came to see, our new U.S. Senator from our great state, Mark Miller. Wow, what a great turnout. Well, you're here for a reason, aren't you? Yeah! You're ready to send a message, aren't you? Yeah! You're ready to shake things up in Washington. Is that right? Yeah! Are you ready to show your power? Yeah! Power is seductive. Mm -hmm. And my political opponent has been seduced by his legislative seat far longer than his capacity to listen to his constituents. Remember, his power is determined by something even more powerful. You. You who want to get ahead. You who want a fair shake. You who are sick and tired of the apathy. The game. The run around. You who are sick and tired of the public officials who let millions of words fall out of their mouths while saying absolutely nothing. <laughs> you want clarity. You want transparency. You want leaders who will say what they mean and mean what they say. You want leaders who will do what they mean to do for the people who hold the power. Make no mistake, you hold the power. You are the power. The power of this great nation. And power like that needs a voice. I hope you will let me be that voice. A voice for the people! People wonder how it's done. Well, that's how it's done. <laughs> that's how anybody who does it, does it. Needless to say, I won. It's like I've been training my whole life for this. A job, a top job, a job that granted me the whole enchilada, a wife, and now success in politics. Pretty easy when you know how to do it. There's an art to it. But pretty soon, things started to change. Sarah, did you get the email I sent you this morning? It's likely. Oh, maybe you didn't check your email yet today. No, I checked it. Oh, so you got the email? Okay, great. Would you do me a favor and double check the letter for typos, then send a hard copy of that to every member of the Tampere group? That's an idea. <laughs> Wait. Wait, what? <laughs> Sounds like a plan. A plan? Yes, it does. Okay, um, good. Thank you. <laughs> good morning, Senator. Good morning, Michael. Just wanted to say, congratulations. Oh, well, thank you very much. Onwards and upwards, eh? The sky's the limit. I think we're all looking forward to some uh, pretty big things. <laughs> big things are what it's all about. The bigger the better. <laughs> Wait a second. First Tara and now Michael? Were these new assistants like me? Was this becoming a vague off? <laughs> I definitely think we see eye to eye. Why, there's no other way to see it. A unified vision is everything. I think we can all look forward to that. Moving on. <laughs> Was he beating me at my own game? I had to wrap this up. Thank you, Michael. No trouble at all, Mr. Miller. If there's anything you need, you just give me a holler, if you know what I mean. Of course I do. Thanks, Michael. Congratulations, Mark. Thanks, honey. Oh, I knew.
knew you could do it. Aw. Is there anything you can't do? Probably. Well, you make everything so easy. Some things, maybe. Well, I knew you were destined for greatness. I knew it the first day we met. My friends knew it, too. That's sweet. I love you. I know. <laughs> Look at me. I love you. Right back at you, kiddo. <laughs> My political career took off. People started paying top dollar just to hear me talk at fundraisers. It doesn't matter what's in your bank account or what your portfolio looks like, or even what's in your wallet as you sit here right now. What matters is right here. This country was founded on heart. Heart is what we live and breathe for. Heart. It's what we fight for. It's the very source of our liberty. And we wouldn't have the freedoms that we hold so dear without it. How can you put a price tag on heart? Again, I'm not here to tell you how much I think you should give. I'm asking you to let your heart be your guide. It's the old follow your heart ploy. Works like a charm. Following our hearts. For those of us who care, that's what we do. When it's time to step up, that's what we do. When it's time to be heard, that's what we do. When it's time to roll up our sleeves, when it's time to get busy, when it's time to do the right thing, we follow our hearts. You've always known it. You've always done it. Your party thanks you for your continued support. Your country thanks you, and I thank you. And the money rolled in. Plenty of it lined my pockets, too. Here are those uh, policy reports you asked for. Uh, I took the liberty of making some uh, edits. Edits? Uh, just some specifics that were perhaps a bit too pointed to the general readership. Excellent. Thanks, Michael. You know, just out of curiosity, what in particular did you unspecify? Just anything that may give an impression that is counterproductive to our cause. That's funny, because I don't recall writing very many specifics. Uh, of course not, Senator. Uh, the report is actually masterfully written. And no one can argue your brilliant skill of nuancing the more salient points. Clarity is certainly your great gift. Clarity. <laughs> oh, please. He was slick. My role is a simple one of refinement and revision. And in revising, I endeavor to accentuate our common goals by underscoring the subtlety you have already beautifully demonstrated. I hated him. <laughs> I put on a brave face for the five years that he worked for me. But I hated him. How could I trust a guy who said everything and at the same time, said absolutely nothing. In the next election cycle, he stole my Senate seat. You hold the power. You are the power. <laughs> the power of this great nation. And power like that needs a voice. <laughs> and I am honored and humbled that you've entrusted to me the privilege of being that voice. Thank you. All of you. Good night. <laughs> this was my game. The game I had been playing my whole life. And now I worked and lived in a city where everyone was trying to play the game. But not like me. Nobody could play the game like me. I'm the artist. I had to beat him. Mark, it was an excellent campaign. You should be very proud. I'm sorry it didn't turn out the way you, um, the way we. I have to beat him. Mark, he just beat you. It doesn't matter. He beat me tonight, but not forever. Well, yes, but. He beat me as me, using my playbook. You heard the speech he gave. 
I'm going to win next. Mark, I've never seen you like this. Are you obsessing? No, I'm driven. This is my game. Game? What game? My art. Art? Game? Mark, you were driven through the whole campaign. You can take a break. Take time to think clearly. I'm thinking clearly. Well, this isn't like you. What is it? I've never heard you talk like this. Like what? Explicitly. <laughs> Directly, I guess. <laughs> Explicitly. Directly. I knew that if I was going to rise beyond Michael, I would have to keep that in check. So I did. And obviously it worked. I rose well beyond him for two terms, but it came at a price. Mark, do you love me? What? Can you ask such a question? No, see, there you go again. Can you doubt my love? Mark, you don't have to answer my question with questions. It's a yes or no answer, a direct answer. Your answer's taking too long, Mark. Of course I loved her. Do love her. The answer should have been simple, direct, but I couldn't find it. I was too deep in the game. Maggie, Maggie kept her affair quiet for years. She did that for me, but after my two terms were over, she left with him, and it was all out in the open. What do I have now? What was it worth? It's your move, Mr. President. Checkmate. What's your name? Claire. It's my first day. I should have people here, Claire. I should have friends. I made my way all the way to the top without a single one. Do you know what that is? What, Mr. President? Exhausting. I'm tired. You're a good listener, Claire. My name is Colby. Colby, Mr. President. It's just Colby. It's not Mark. You can call me Colby. Yes, sir. Claire, can I ask a favor? Of course, sir. Ask me any question. <laughs> what sort of question? Anything. Anything you want. Make something up. Um, okay. Uh, what's your favorite color? Green. Grass green, like a grassy hill under a sunny sky. That kind of green. Nothing fluorescent, just natural. Ask me another one. Um, okay. Uh, what's your favorite letter of the alphabet? O. Oh. Everybody picks a consonant, so I want a vowel. But I don't want to be first or last, so that rules out A and U. I is right in the middle, but I sound so pretentious. <laughs> that leaves E and O. But I don't like the sound of E. I like the sound of O. It sounds round, 
And O is just a circle, the simplest of all shapes. Ask me another one. What? Ask me another one. Just one more. OK, let's see. OK, what's your favorite food? It's almost supper time. Ah, that's a good one. It's pretty simple. Mushroom and sausage Chicago-style pizza with a tall glass of English porter to wash it down. <laughs> Sounds great, but I don't think we have that. That's OK. Do you know what I really like today? What's that? Something I haven't had in years. What is it? Don't laugh. I won't laugh. Doesn't matter what kind. What would you like? No guarantee. Fish. <laughs> fish. Just fish. Uh, Mr. Pres. Colby. I'll see what I can do.